Recording in progress. I have a question, actually. Got it. Um, I was listening to Dance of the Blessed Spirits, and I heard two different flutists, Galway, and then I think Paula Robeson, and both of them seem to uh, take the Listesso tempo at uh, like the uh, half tempo, I mean lower, less. Uh, it says Listesso like same tempo, but it seems like they're almost taking the 76 as the eighth note for the Listesso tempo. Is that right? Yeah, that, yeah, is, that most is most common. common. Some, versions Some versions will, yeah, actually, will actually call it double. Call it double. Um, yes, so, so, there you go. Yes, yes, that makes, that total, makes total, sense. total sense. Okay, I was just wondering, because did Listesso, does it mean same though? It does, it does and, and I think, I, especially if you're using, using the flute tunes, tunes version, version maybe, maybe they just they forgot, forgot to indicate. To indicate. So, so yeah, I've been playing it that way because, like I said, two different trusted uh, flutists were doing that. I just wanted to make sure I was hearing it right. <laughs> um, so I was thinking of maybe the Listesso tempo section. You could give me uh, some lesson on that. Um, is this sound all right? Talking? You sound, you sound great, to, great me. to me. Okay, good. in there huh. beautifully, beautifully done, done Andrea. Andrea all right so all let's, right, start, let's with start with this how, how did, it did it feel to you, you? <clears throat> um 
Well, pretty good in that I didn't play it any worse than I was playing it when I was practicing it. <laughs> I don't know. Right. right. And it sounded, it sounded great. great. What are what some are of some your of favorite, favorite parts, parts of, of your, your playing? playing? What do you what think, do you that, think you that you did really well, really today? well today? Um, I, I don't know. And this, and is, this tough is tough because, because there's, there's a battle, a battle between, between like ego, ego and melody and, melody and, all, all, these and all these things. things. Uh, but, but we enjoy we music. Enjoy we love music. music. There's, there's a reason we play, play it. it. So, so I, I want, want for you to you challenge, challenge yourself, yourself to think of something, something, that, you something that you liked about your playing. Your playing. Um, well, I still enjoy being play being able to play most of the notes right because. Uh, I've kept playing the whole time. I majored in music for a year, decided that I wasn't going to be a professional musician, and then made a pact with myself that I wouldn't put my flute away. So I've taken lessons or played in a flute choir or whatever. Um, but that doesn't mean, even when I, I didn't take lessons a whole lot, and even when I did, I didn't have time. I had my life going on, so I didn't have tons of time to practice. Uh, so now I'm getting into it a little more and have had a lot more time to practice and I've been, you know, I, I was frustrated with my life before because it just felt like it was really hard to learn the notes of a piece. Tech, this is not super fast, so it, it, it's easier, but you ask me what I enjoy. I enjoy when I can actually more or less play the piece in terms of technical. <laughs> you know, notes and so forth. The tone and stuff I is is fun and I, I enjoy all of my playing. I mean I, I enjoyed playing the piece um even now but I I'm searching for being able to translate what I imagine the musicality of the the piece and also interpreting it and then playing what I hear and imagine and so forth. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that transitions, and that transitions to, to what would be the next, be the next question. question. But I want but you I to go ahead and practice. practice. I thought you, I had, thought a you had a beautiful tone, tone and I thought, and you, had I thought, you, had thought you had lovely tapers. tapers. Do you agree? Do you agree? Um, yeah, I was, I was happy with the tone and, and I was trying to do the tapers well. Doesn't it, Doesn't feel, it feel good to say, good to say I'm happy I'm with, happy my, with tone. my tone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great. great, so much so great much stuff great on, there. on there. Uh, and, uh, and since, since you, have you have the pencil, pencil on the hand, hand, can you just, just go ahead and mark, mark uh, uh, down B to measure 38 should be a C natural, B to C natural. Uh, the C uh, sharp starts. Down B to 38. Sorry, 39. 39. B to C, and then the next note's a C sharp. Yeah. Did I play C sharp? Yeah, and there's just a few little things which may have just been because we get nervous when we perform in front of people, right? Yes, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. All right, so All since right, we have so lots we have of time, time today, today, let's go let's ahead go and go ahead back, and go back to, to the beginning, beginning of this, of this and we'll just do chunk, chunk by chunk. chunk. Okay. So, so when I hear you I play, hear you play we'll, just we'll just start and, and I'll, I'll, you'll hear me stop. How about that? Okay.
Awesome. Let's go ahead and pause there. Um, good. Um, good. So, so I just unplugged my external speaker. speaker. Hopefully there's less there's echo less now, too. too. I know, I know that we're know hearing, that we're hearing a, bit. a bit. Not sure if it's on mine or not. But um, beautiful. beautiful. All right. All right. So, so you, said you said that you want to bring a little bit more of your story, story to your play. What is, what is your story? story? What's going, What's going on, on here? Or what is the opera story in this particular place? I wanted to go back and refresh my uh, memory. I'm not exactly sure what this part is supposed to be, and all I have in my head is Hades Town right now. <laughs> so I don't know if that's anything to do with it, because that's uh, Eurydice and Orpheus <laughs> well, the, well, in the and, opera. And, right, right. And, and, and this is the this scene, is scene where, where I think Orpheus, 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 Orpheus is seeing the, the blessed spirits and, and have, have just entered, entered that part. That part of the afterlife, the afterlife in search of his search beloved, beloved where yes. there, it's there, very, very passive, passive. The, the, the part of the afterworld where memories and worldly, worldly things, things are removed, removed and purity, purity begins, begins to shine, shine through. through. Mm. Um, um, so, so I think, I think that, that this presentation, presentation just, started just started very strong, strong and I love, I love your tone. Your tone. <laughs> you were there, there right, right away. away. I wonder I though if it makes sense as you're entering this part of the afterworld, the afterworld if maybe you maybe could enter, enter with a little bit more gentleness, more gentleness and then develop, develop the sound, the sound a bit more over, over the time. The time. Mm -hmm. um, um, instead of a very, a very strong, strong down, 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 down kind of like yes. envelope, in. let's try let's that try and that see that if it fits what you're hoping, hoping to do. To do. Great. Take a Take risk, a on, risk that on that A as well. As well. This is a this safe is a space, everybody. We can try things. things. If, it works, if it works, keep it. If it doesn't, it doesn't work, work, like, like smile, nod your head, and toss it. That won't affect me. me. But we're also we're friends also here. Friends we're learning together. together. So, so I'm going to crack at least 25 notes, notes today. today. Maybe you do too. Who knows? But let's see how you can sneak in on that A. I can tell I can there's a little, a little bit of tension, tension around those 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Uh -huh. so, so when you're, when thinking, you're of thinking, of thinking of it as, as being, being in this in kind of half-time half feeling, feeling, you can think your eighth note holes. And when you're and really thinking of the eighth note holes, those 30, 30 second notes aren't so fast. fast. So, so maybe, maybe you can breathe in on the eight notes, and, and then, then kind of, kind of, kind of let, let yourself feel be set, set on that 30 second note rest. rest. So there's so not a frantic, frantic inhale. inhale. And then, and then you can just, just kind of come, come back on that seizure. Sure. So let's just try the release B by A. So the air is already there, you need to take a part. Yeah, so yeah, let's, so let's make, make a little exercise. Little exercise. Mm -hmm. Step away from the music for a second. So this is what happens as humans. Mm -hmm. Patterns, Patterns get formed in our mind throughout our lifetimes. The mind, the mind works where we try to go to the closest, closest pattern, pattern that we know, that we know. But, but included in, in patterns, in patterns are, the are the things associated with them, like trauma or drama or, drama or tension or, or fear, or whatever, whatever it might be. be. 
Sometime in our, sometime in our life, we saw 30 second notes and thought, that's really, really fast, that's really, really hard. And now when we see those 30 second notes, chances are something in our mind is triggering that we feel that, that tension still. So step away from the music. I see, I see no 30 no second notes. notes. I, just I just feel, feel C sharp D E D. It's feeling more relaxed. relaxed. Good. Good. At the B flat A. And keep it as calm in your mind as you can. Beautifully done, Andrea. Nice. Did it, did it, as you, as stepped you stepped away from the music, from the music and, and practiced a little bit, the part that, the part that looks, looks hard, hard and, then and then came back to the music, music did it feel any more simple, simple any more relaxed, relaxed to approach those 30, 30 seconds? seconds? Yeah. I, I didn't think about it as much. Like, you know, I just tried to play, tried to be without tension and Great. Right. And, yeah. and placing the breath, the breath earlier, earlier, I think, I also, also helped, helped, with helped with that. Trying to breathe, Trying to breathe in a small, small space, like a 30 second note <laughs> rest, especially, especially when there's when time, time beforehand, beforehand that we that could use, use. Yes. Tends, tends to create this like response, response in our physical, our physical body, body of, of fight and flight response type thing. It's stimulates the vagus nerve and stuff like that. So allowing the air to come in naturally on the bigger space also just is going to produce that more relaxed sound. Really nicely, really nicely done. done. I just want to point out one more thing in that same 39 measure, measure where we just ended, just ended the second, second ago. ago. Yes. There is an F natural on what would be, I guess, the sixth beat. beat. So, rhythmically, so rhythmically, we're thinking, we're thinking one, one and, and three, three and, 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 am I counting right? right? One, one and, and three and five and six. One, two, one and. Three, three and, 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 and five, five and six. six. One, One, two. So I'm, so hearing, I'm hearing your G, your G a little, a little bit, bit sustained into, into the, the sixth, sixth count. Yes. Um. Yes. That little F repository is a suspension of the previous F. Um, but if you don't, if you don't present that F on the sixth count, then we, we don't hear it as that suspension. Can I hear just that measure thirty nine? There it is, nice and I I wanted to I make sure I got to that before I forgot, because you did do it that, that other way, way a, a couple of times, times but that, that is that much is more much accurate rhythmically. So beautifully, so beautifully done on addressing, addressing that. that. I also, I also just, just wanted to point out, point though, that, that when you when relaxed your 30-second 30 30 notes, notes, it seemed like you had you better air, air, and then when you arrived at those suspensions, like in the downbeat of measure 34, you had you had more fullness to your tone than when you presented the first time, and those suspensions came out so nice, like the... And probably just because you had the deeper breath since you took the breath earlier. If you go back and listen to the recording, I think the first time, the first two times, you'll hear it sounded nice, 
but that third time, time it sounded rich, rich and deep, and, deep and, 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 that and that non four tone, tone had a little bit more of that passion, passion because you had the air to give it that fuel. So really well done. How are you feeling now? Oh, I'm feeling great. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any other questions or anything that you want to talk about? Um, No, mostly I was on the, was on the right path. And then when you played it, I, I saw that it was being played correctly. I, I listened a little. I was very familiar with the Lento and didn't really remember the second section very much. So like I said, did a little, you know, research with a couple of players and listened to them. Uh, like remembering that in this, I believe the trill starts on the note, right? Yeah, I That's think that's the way they were playing the it. Da, 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 rather than dia. Uh, well, well, well so, so are you talking about, about like measure, measure 55? 55? Probably. There's not a lot of trills. Yeah. That's so, one. So, they seem to play it on the note. Is that right or is that not? We could, we could add, add the appositoro from, from the upper F. F. But since the, since note, the note is already, already the upper, upper F, F, it's not, it's not really, really necessary. necessary. So, so I'm, I'm oh, not I sure see, what because I the note before, that's probably why they did it. Yeah. I, I, I actually I do trill from the F on those. those. Do you? Okay, I, so that I, was a good question. I was wondering about it. Yeah. So I, I, I suppose they're just choosing that, yeah, yeah. But, but. what to do. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's a good. Yeah, and yeah, I also I want to point out that even when you played. One, one wrong note, note measure 39, 39 and, a, and, a, and the same, and the same measure, measure that, that rhythm, rhythm you uh -huh. were on, on the right, the right path. path. So, so when you when just you spoke, spoke about your own process, process you, said you said that you weren't, weren't on the right path, path at, at, at certain point, point like you, you, you thought you were on the right path. path. You were. You were. Even you when we play a wrong note, you are still on the right path, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I said mostly that I was capable of it. Not that I would get every note correct every time. but. Good. No, I, I it. completely, yeah. And sometimes, like, I think that I had gotten that in the same measure, 39. Um, as you saw, even when I wrote the note there, I went in autopilot, and I must have been playing that C natural as a C sharp. Patterns, Patterns are hard. So it was, it was really in there. Um, but my note made me go back and question what I just played, so that was good. And it will help go forward. Yeah, so... Um, uh that that's very helpful that's a good example i because when you said that i thought huh have i been playing that way all along or did i really just miss it <laughs> and i'm pretty sure i've been playing it uh incorrectly so that was great well and well, pencil and that's cheap, cheap enough, enough it doesn't hurt to market, market right? right oh yeah it's great. Well, well Andrea, Andrea, thank you again, thank you again for, being for being brave and sharing, sharing yourself, yourself today, today. Thank, thank you, you so much round of applause, applause from everybody and solo of the month, month. And uh, yeah. hope to hear you great, great soon. soon. There's so There's many so comments, comments coming up in the chat, chat about how people love different parts of you too. So oh, enjoy that part, that part of it. Of it. <laughs> thank right. you. How about we shift gears, gears and have, have Ruth play some of the Goddard Suite? Okay, I think I will play the first um, two bits of it. Let's see. Um, does this sound okay? Okay, good, no big echoes. Yeah, I'm hearing you okay.
bravo. Sorry, it takes me a second to unmute. Bravo, Ruth. That was so nicely done. Um, and I also just want to say thank you for being brave. Ruth had signed up to play today. She signed up to play the Gluck today. And when I expressed that I didn't have anybody signed up for the Godard, uh, except for the, the woman in England who, who had a go to a family emergency, um, Ruth said, well, I can do that. So excellent job, Ruth, for stepping up to the Goddard. So nice. First question I have to ask you is, what about your playing just now did you like? I don't know. I think just that I played it at all. Now, the thing is, is that it's, I, I think I've, I don't know. Um, it doesn't look like it's a hard piece at all, but yet, you know, it really points out some things I'm working on with technique. And, you know, all right, wait, wait, wait. We'll get there in a second. Stick with, tell me two things that you liked about what you just did. Okay, the piece to me is like flying. And You're talking about the piece. I want you to tell me about what you. So, you, um, you were flying? Oh, I wish I'd fly. Um, I just thought I was having a lot of fun playing it. You know, it wasn't perfect by any means, but I was having a lot of fun. All right. I had fun playing it. Simplify that statement. Say it. I had fun playing it. Good. And when you have fun, I guarantee the audience has more fun. All right. So these I statements are really hard for us to do because we're told sometime in our life that when we start to praise ourselves, then we become bad human beings. But that's not actually how it works. Bad human beings are bad for different reasons. You're an amazing person. Tell me something else about you with an I statement that you liked about this. I really like playing this 1937 Haynes flute with this. It just feels so good. I get it, I get it. I thought you took a impressive tempo. I think that you were, had a lot of accuracy. I loved how clear your low leaps came out. Like we heard your low notes, right? That's hard. And sometimes it's easy for us to forget how hard it is to be a flute player. Like none of what we're doing is easy. So really great job. Now, are there things that you would like to uh, focus some attention to work on, to improve? Oh God, so I don't know what, so what we're working on this week is that middle section starting at 28. And I don't know if I am doing those trills correctly at all, specifically the trill at 30, 38 that goes to the A flat, goes G to A flat. Yeah, so we'll go over both those trills because the first one I don't think I heard an A to B flat also. Um, so let's go ahead and start with that uh, trill section. Um, so you had a nice G piano. And then when we arrive at measure 32, 31, measure 30, with that trill, it's A to B flat. If you are using your thumb B flat, which I am a huge thumb B flatter, um, then it, you can put the uh, plus thumb B flat at that G um, when you take your breath after the low C, so it's already on. If you are not a thumb B flatter, you might write the word lever over those two measures prior, so that way the lever is already on. The lever will help you with the next run too. But I think thumb B flat is probably the way to go. Ruth, you are a thumb B flatter, right? I am, and I don't think this particular flute is a lever, but my other one does. Okay, so maybe just mark at that G to put your thumb B flat back on. We had to take it off in the previous section because of all those B naturals, right? Um, but okay. that little bit of lead on paper can give you maybe all the information you need to know right there. So let's start with that first one. Very good. We'll pause there. And I can, wow, beautiful low D coming from that B flat. Great job with these intervals. Now tell me about that trill that you just did and how it was executed. Did it, did it match the um, style or the mood that you're uh, kind of presenting with this allegretto? Um, I don't quite understand the section yet, so that's... <laughs> So well, and that know. becomes the interpretive question. Does it maintain that same kind of intensity and rhythmic drive, the, the speed of the section before it? Or is this a new section with a new mood? And perhaps then we need to approach it differently. So you can think of two ways. 
or you can think of um, unlimited ways, really. But here are two. Who here are two different ways. Rapid trill at the beginning to keep the intensity of the sixteenth notes that we had before, or we can think of this as being a middle section with a completely different feel. Where maybe it comes back, so that way when we trill, we can accelerate the, the rapidness of our trill into the 16th notes to push it a little forward. What are you feeling based on just those two thoughts? I guess I kind of like the first way better, even though I think the second one probably fits the style better. You like the, the rapid at the front? Yeah, but, but again, you know, I might try that second one because I don't really understand what musically is going on in that section and this is one of those things so right now i demonstrated two different things it's kind of like walking in the store and seeing the mannequin wearing the clothing that you may or may not buy and your head is like well it looks good on the mannequin but it might not look good on me so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna try it on right so let's try it both ways again Great, and now let's give the A a little bit of time to develop. Yeah, I'm sorry, let me hear that. That almost worked. We're, we're conquering latency. I think I was still a little bit fast. Yeah, so let's just try it right on the trill, just so you can practice this, because I know I'm a band person, and I am pro-band. I feel like a lot of flute teachers are like anti-band and pro-orchestral orchestral playing. I'm pro-both. I'm, play, I'm pro-playing the flute, right? Um, so in my band-developed mindset, trills were as fast as possible because it's going to be put in a march, right? Let's just play with it a little bit. How could I keep speeding that up? Oh. Oh, excuse me, I have to plug my computer in. It's complaining that it's slow. Sure, no worries. And you know what? It is sometimes hard to, when we're used to doing it one way, which is a good way. I'm not telling you you need a change or, or specifically asking you to. You are doing, what you're doing is great. I just want you to have more options in case you decide that you want to try something different. Um, well, you it you is hard to get into a new pattern, right? Oh, yeah, and you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I play in band. That's what I, you know, trolls are fast. That's why I'm having trouble with the section. Okay, now I'm plugged back in. That might be something worth playing around with a bit more because, yeah. you know, when you first put on a pair of shoes, they don't always feel right either, right? So might need a little breaking in. And you might seek feedback from other people besides me. I am one set of ears up here talking to you. We've got a group of 16, 15 other people listening. They might have some feedback of what they like. Um, both are great options. If you have trusted ears, play for them, right? Play for the your friends and your band. You have a band, you already have a group of people, hopefully that you feel safe sharing things with. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and look at the other and we'll try it both ways too. So the Trill in 38, if you are using the um, My Pianist Pro app, I don't know how many of you are using My Pianist Pro. Uh, he doesn't say Trill Flat. I did email him about that. So hopefully it'll say like pausing to update sometime when you open the app again. It should be a G to A flat trill for sure. And I think, Ruth, you were already doing that, or at least that's what you said. I don't know if it's correct or not. Yeah, it's and G to A flat, and that'll just be your um, left pinky spatula key thing. Uh, so let's try that both ways, too. The rapid from the onset. So that's... What was that trill again? From your G fingering, you'll just trill your pinky. Oh, that's easy. That's not what I was doing. 
Yeah. Oh, that's much easier. Mm -hmm. So let's try that one also rapidly. And then developing. See, what I'm doing is I'm slowing the whole thing down when I do that. Well, so, yeah, sometimes when we want to make a change, it does require then practicing the change yeah. also. The first step would be deciding which of those you want to do. So as you play and listen back to this recording, maybe you'll get a different feeling in mind. So let's do it again with a rapid onset from the phrase. developing. Yeah, I'm still not doing it very slowly. Okay, let's try it on the chill again. And the, the reason I'm kind of, I guess, I'm not telling you to do this, but I'm kind of pushing you to try this a little bit more is because I think Starting a trill gives it a little bit more of that calm, romantic feeling, which is good contrast to all of the excitement that we had before. But then as we begin to develop the trill or speed the trill up, I think it leads into the 16th note run versus, because right now you're trilling actually faster than the 16th notes. Yeah. Um, and then it almost sounds like you're slowing down for the moving part that follows. Yeah. So let's just try the developing the trill one more time. and then going into the 16th that follow. Mm -hmm. Good, so thank you for trying this. And, and as it stands now, you're kind of pausing at the end of the trill. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really, really common too. So I think trills are probably the most under-practiced mm -hmm. ornament that we do as flute players um, because yeah. of our, most of us have a band background. In a band, it was just like wiggle the finger as fast as you can and that's all it was, right? So um, deciding how we treat the trill, whether it's immediate, whether it develops, that's one part. And then the way they, we end the trill. Do we want to let the trill end and then move on? Or do we want the trill to move into the section? You know, there's options. And as performers, which all of us in this room are, or whatever room you're in, right? We all are performers. Whether we do it for money or not, it's cool. Um, so maybe just live with both trills for a while and then play it for a couple of ears that you trust after you've gotten some time to practice those and see if, if one feels better than the other. Um, so does that answer your, I know that you had some questions in that trill section specifically with fingerings. Do you want to go over some more specific kind of things? Like oh that? yeah, and then those trills come back again at 54. And again, I just don't know what to do with them. They seem really fast. Yeah. and. But you're doing the right trills, which is great. So let's see. I have a little warm-up sheet. I'm going to copy the link into the chat so everyone can see it. Um, and then we can talk about that a little bit. So if, if you go to that link and then go to the Goddard, there's a PDF download -y thing. Um, it's free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, so if, any, if anybody wants to check that out, and then scroll to the last page of it, because it's just the way my mind works unedited, I guess. When I do things that I sell, I have to have people help me put it sometimes in better order, because my brain just brains sometimes. Um, so what you're doing is great. Um, the way I like to practice trills, if you scroll to the last four lines, is like measure 105, mm -hmm. uh, especially trills that have that ending. Um, I like to think of it as a, a gruppetto instead of just seeing those those um, the graces at the end. 
And you might notice I have it in 4-4. Four, four. I'm thinking of practicing the trills in half time, partly because it's calmer. And when I practice, I want to calm in the most mentally, I want to practice in the most mentally calm state I can. But also I teach this piece frequently and nobody likes to put the octave leap on the and. Like people like to put an octave leap on the downbeat kind of a thing, right? So most people trill those trills a little too long. So let's just start with a gruppetto, which would be beat three of measure 105. And go ahead and go to the octave D. Yeah, so uh, just just the gruppetto on the, do you have the uh, PDF thing up? I do. All right, so 105, beat three is that five tuplet there. Let's just hear that. Yeah, just to work on the evenness of the fingers. And then think for a second quarter notes. So measure 105. Yeah, and go and do it all slurred for now. Eighth notes. Yeah, so try measure 106, the straight eights. Good, and then two beats of sixteenths. Yeah, but even there, you rapid, you, you made the ending more rapid. So what we're going to do instead of just make the fingers rapidly, haphazardly, mm -hmm. I'm micromanaging your trill. I'm sorry, but you're the one who brought up trills, right? So I did. <laughs> sorry about me being a micromanager. It is the personality trait I inherited from my father that I'm not proud of, but it is part of me. Um, try it one more time where you're thinking, so this is 107. One E and a two E and a hippopotamus four. Good. And then if you take that exact same line, those three measures with a metronome and speed it up. If you practice this type of thing, away from the music, then when you come to the music, you can approach the music saying, I already know, I've created a healthy pattern in my mind of approaching these trills in a very um, calm and easy and established way that I don't have to guess any longer, right? So uh, maybe maybe try that. But with the trills that you had before, the as far as the technique, the D to E flat was right, the E flat to F was good, the E to F was good, the F to G was good. So the actual trills that you were doing were right and were totally fine. Um, and me bringing up this thought of doing this managed warm up is simply to hopefully take away any stress around those trills, right? Do you want to try a next one or do you want to? give that time to just be something that's on your next to your practice stand to do over the next few days and, and live with it for a while. <laughs> oh, you mean you wanted me to play the rest of the uh, movement? No, I, I mean, do you want to try that same practice on measure the E flat trill or oh, the E trill or the F trill? Yep. Let me just pull this back up because <laughs> I have one screen today, so I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you either. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so let's just start with the gruppetto. Okay, I'm sorry. What we're on 105 again. Yeah, let's jump down to 108. So we'll just 108. Okay. Apply the practice to the next trill. Let's start with the gruppetto. I probably should have a extra measure there. And the reason I'm having you treat it like a gruppetto is because I want you to think about the way the trill transitions. We think about often starting the trill, but we rarely think about how we end the trill. When there's a gruppetto, we usually just think of those as like, ah, freak out, grace notes, or whatever, right? Or when there's those little double grace things at the end, whatever it is. So let's add the quarters. I'm not Call. sure I understand what a gruppetto is. Oh, is, so is a um, where you that, go up and down and. The gruppetto is your principal note, the note above in the key signature, the principal mm -hmm. note the note below in the key signature, back to the principal note. So the gruppetto okay. is that five note thing. I've got it printed out or written out in measure each of these measures. Okay, so, great. So the gruppetto is beat three. So let's just do the beat three of 108. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Calm quarters. Do that one again, all slurred. Um, no, I should not use any shortcut fingerings in that. So this is one of my least favorite trills on the flute, and I have a non-patented flute design that would completely alleviate this issue for all flutes that incorporate it, but in the meantime, finger E flat. Okay. We will trill these two fingers, the right um, second and third finger. Let's when see. we leave the left first finger all the way up, F doesn't sound good. Okay. If we put the left first finger all the way down, the E flat doesn't sound good. So what we're supposed to do is vent the left first finger, meaning press right. it half the way down or lift it half the way up, depending on how you think of your technique. Um, that left first finger halfway closed is really just a tricky thing to feel. So I wasn't going to harp on that one way or the other for you today. Um, <laughs> and it's just one measure. So I don't know. Okay. It's one of those things that, like, if we were working on this a lot, then I might, like, say, let's let's get it really, really right. But for now, just do what whatever you're doing with that. But let's try the eighth note slur. Okay. So, yeah, so, the first finger ideally halfway or even slightly more closed than halfway, venting it so it's just barely open. And for those of you listening at home, um, all the way closed probably works better for most flutes than all of the way open does. So if you're just like, eh, the piano's loud enough, I don't have to go for that <laughs> extra, extra. Um, I think it usually sounds better closed than open, but that slightly open is ideal. All right, and then same thing with 16th notes. Yeah. So giving that a little bit of love as maybe a part of your warm up will allow you to come to this piece without having to think about those trills anymore. I like to practice away from the music as much as possible. Get my thinking done out there so that way when I'm in the music, I can be more in the music and less in my head. Um, and that's hard, right? That takes a lot of practice and I don't always have that much time to practice, so it doesn't always work. But when I have a little bit of time to practice away from the music, definitely think it's worth it. All right, so does that trill thing at the uh, that last page of the handout, do you think that will satisfy your trill needs? I think that's going to help a lot. All right, Ruth. Any other things that you wanted to look at today with this? Um, The last. I have a uh, snoring think... dog behind me. Sorry, but I'm just going to let <laughs> sleeping dogs lie or whatever it is saying is. So I guess I have the question about the last three measures. And I guess you do it in one breath. I mean, it sounds awfully. I guess my question is, I'll just play it first. It, it sounds like you should do it in one breath, but I seem to be running out. Yeah, so a couple of things could be happening here. Um, one could be the approach of the breath in the first place, when and where you're breathing and how you're breathing for the quality of the inhale. So quality of inhale directly relates to the quality of the sound out. Um, part of it could be the way that you're using your air too. And right now in that demonstration, there's a little bit of air sound around the tone of your articulation, ch -ch 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 -ch, kind of. Do you feel that a little bit in the way that you're tonguing? Yeah, I mean, I want to do it lightly. I'm not sure if I should be double tonguing. And if I do double tongue, it's going to sound really choppy. So and let's then... practice a few things real quick together and discover, right? So yeah. as a teacher, I, I, all I've been doing for 20 years is teaching flute, right? I never think that my answers are the answer, okay? But I like to think of teachers as people who help you on your journey of exploring what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So let's explore a few things. Can we first explore by doing this, that exact same chunk slurred and focusing on the quality of your tone as you're slurring uh, and maybe thinking of the size and shape of your aperture is in the slur. Go for it. How would the amount of air that you have when you did that way compare to when you tongued? 
I think this time I remembered you're supposed to start soft. And I didn't do that before. I was really playing loud. So part of it was because of the dynamic assistance of starting soft or you felt you had more air. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do it slurred again and try and taking it back in tempo just a tiniest bit. The Reduce the tempo to the point where it doesn't feel quite as exciting, I guess, where it just feels a little bit more like I'm playing an arpeggio and that's fine. And the arpeggio is just the B-flat major arpeggio too. So if you go through that practice packet, there's like a whole page of B-flat major arpeggios almost. I don't, I don't remember. It's like three years old or four years old that I put it together. Um, so whatever, however many arpeggios, it's just that B-flat major arpeggio and it's inversion. So calm, calm it down a little bit. Do it one more time. The B-flat, but that's fine. Good. So even a little bit slower, you still made it through the phrase in the same breath, right? Yeah. So that might be showing us that when you're playing it faster, you feel more excited. And the way that the body handles that excitement could be communicating to the brain that you don't want to lose too much air because you're going to die if you do, right? <laughs> uh, the flight, the fight, flight, freeze responses really do start to kick in when we play the flute. And then we have air, but we don't feel like we're safe to access the, access the air. Um, so, and another thing, I think the more that you slur it, the, the better shaped your embouchure is getting, like each time you do it, I feel like the tone's getting a little bit more clear. Whereas when you did it the first time, you may have been wasting a little bit of air. Um, so you mentioned, should I double tongue or not? Well, that depends on how fast you feel safe single tonguing, I guess, and how comfortable you are with double tonguing. Uh, I do double tongue it. And, um, I think... I like to trick my brain on some things too. With the double tonguing, for example, the second syllable usually doesn't feel as good. So let's, at whatever tempo you need to, let's single tongue this, but use your second syllable, your non-dominant syllable. So do you think tuku or taka, or what are your syllables that you think when you double tongue? Um, I, I guess taka, 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 taka. Ka, ka, ka would be your second then? Let's yeah. do it all a legato ka. And think of how the lips can help you not waste any air on this less common syllable. So you seem so slow. Yeah, so let's start a little higher. Let's just play B flat on the ka. Sustain the tone. Mm -hmm. Slowly alternate K now. But let's keep it legato. Mm -hmm. Can you make it even more legato? It's still a little. Yes. So here's a little aside. I'm sorry that I'm like the aside person or whatever. Double tonguing, we tend to go right away into the shortest articulation we can because we think it needs to be short. It's staccato and we're going to play fast. As we're practicing, my experience is practice the most legato double tonguing you can. The space between the tongues we want to be full because as you get faster, the tongue isn't changing its size, right? The, the, the silence created by tonguing is determined by the shape and, shape and size of your tongue, which isn't changing. Like going fast isn't going to make your tongue smaller, right? I guess there's like some physics theories where like, if you go really fast, you do shrink and mass or whatever, but we're not going that fast, right? Um, so as you get faster, what's getting shorter is this tone. So practice that with the legato tone. And as you get faster, it's going to sound to the listener as shorter. But if you're already practicing short, and then you start to, as we're going slow, when you go faster, it's going to sound to the listener as no tone, right? So go for as much tone as you can at the slower coo, 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 coo. 
More legato. Yeah. Now I'm hearing you stopping the air somewhere other than your tongue. So once the air gets excited, initiated at the core muscles, I like to think as low as the belly button, even though I know, whatever. I like to think of the sound starting in my belly button and the air not being interrupted until it reaches my tongue. That's the first point of interruption, so not the throat at all. Push the air. Do that again. So Get more tone. Take it down. Let's see to the F below. More legato still. And the low D. Mm -hmm. Good. And make sure it's the tongue moving and not the jaw. I see a tiny bit of jaw movement. So then what you might do away from the music is just B flat arpeggios. Actually, let's not go to the octave. Let's just do the B flat, D, F, D, B flat. Keep it easy. Let's slur it so you can think of the quality of your air. Does everyone hear how clear her tone is when she slurs? Beautiful. That sounded good. Slur it again. I like that so much. Mm -hmm. All on two, as legato as possible. All coup. And do you hear how your coup syllables are shorter? When you did the two, you were able to have the legato tongue. The coup mm -hmm. is shorter, right? So let's work for a balanced tongue. Try the coup again, even more legato. Coup. That sounded good. Are you cooing still? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful then. And let's do the same thing, alternate. Two, coo, two, coo, two. Slur it. Double tongue. Uh, yeah, no, no, keep it the same. Go back and forth, same speed, just listening for the quality of your tone, slurred versus tongued. No, 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 take that, take that, take that away. Stop that, stop that, stop that. So take that short stuff away because when you get fast, it's not gonna work. It's gonna sound like air. So do it slurred. Double tongued, but that same speed. But why did it get short all of a sudden? I mean, you know, that's that autopilot thing with double tonguing. So let's build a new pattern, right? And this is the hardest thing. The mind is really, really powerful. It's like the best computing system that we could imagine. And what it's doing is it's just putting it back in the pattern that it knows best, right? So you've got to do something. Maybe even we need to completely break the pattern. I thought just by doing this arpeggio, it was far enough away from the music. But if you still are trying to break the pattern and you're falling back into your normal patterns, you can do even more different things. I sometimes do it with rhythms. I sometimes have students stand on one foot, or I sometimes have students turn off the lights or change the light with like LED lights. Now it's like Google set my lights to orange or something. I don't know if you've got those fancy things. I don't, but break your pattern because we need the air to continue through this articulation slur and then slow legato double tongue. That exact same air, just add the tongue. Nope, you're stopping the air. Do you feel it? Oh, I see it. Yeah. Okay, let's just do it on a B flat. More like that. Yes, do that again. 
it started to da, pa, pa, and then it started to separate. Do you feel it separating? Yeah. Be in control. You're wanting to go short again. And I tell you what, it's going to sound short when you make it fast. Make it sound long while you can, okay? So you went slower, but you still added space. You're still stopping the air. More like that, yeah. So rather than take the time now to apply it mm. to this particular piece, I think what needs to happen is we need to go back to double tonguing 101 and reestablish your relationship with double tonguing that yes, sometimes I can do it very short, but never at the compromise of the clarity of the tone. Mm. And what's going to help that is keeping the air continuous. The only thing that's interrupting the air is going to be your tongue and it's just going to be for the duration of the tongue, right? So you're not stopping the air in the throat or at the, the, the core support. So, do it on your twos, do it on your coos, and just go back to a simple, as your warm up, because you're already an established flute player, as part of your warm up, the most simplified version of double tonguing practice you can figure out, just finding the air continuing through. Does that make sense? And so. then start to apply it to simple patterns like arpeggios or scales and then apply it to this broken arpeggio. So I think it's going to be a three-step process for you to get the sound that you want um, of this ending. But you know what? We've got time. That's part of this process is we don't rush it. We do what we need to do and we think, all right, this is a different view because I'm in a different leg of my journey and it's cool, right? Yeah. It's All right, Ruth, you sound so great. It's always nice to hear you. Any other quick questions? Just a question about practicing with Tom Play. Um, you mentioned another program. Yeah, I don't have Tom Play, um, so I can't make a comparison of one or the other. But the app that um, I use is uh, My Pianist Pro. Yeah, I wrote that down. Um, and I think it's just like my, my pianist AI or something. I don't really remember the website. Um, but if you have, I don't know if you're an Apple or, um, Android user, but it's on both. Um, and it's just the app that I've been using lately because it's inexpensive. I think you can pay monthly or annually. And I, I don't know, but I think it's like $30 a year. Um, and Part of the reason why I really like this app is because the developer of the app, Yuho, is very accessible. So I started emailing him things like, hey, I think there's a misprint here. Hey, blah, blah, blah. He would fix it almost immediately. And we've developed a little bit of a, a, a professional relationship. And he is so responsive that this wasn't a piece that was on My Pianist Pro before. It, I just emailed him, say, we're going to start working on this piece. And he said, I'll try to add it. And he... He's trying to get the look done, but I don't know what, what the holdup on that is. And he's going to do the the other, the still of the group month amateur edition. He's going to be doing the September thing for that. So there's not a whole lot of flute rep on it yet, but um, there's a, a good quantity. Let's see. I can't quite count. So there's more than I can count right now, but they're... Um, it's, it's a nice artificial intelligence app, which means that if you, depending on how you have it set, if you slow down, it will slow down too, if you want it to. Really? And if you speed up, it will speed up if you want it to also. So, um, or you can just tell it to be like more rhythmically and metronomic and that that's nice too for practice, so. At what point would you start working with the accompaniment? So personally, ooh, that's tough. Um, as long as I feel like the required technique is available to me, ah, here's my answer. I would do all of the technique of the music away from the music first. Okay. So for this one, I'd practice my B flat major scales and arpeggios, um, the A major arpeggio for the ending, um, those trills by themselves, you know, um, without the accompaniment, you know that I love the beat to beat practice, the I might do that a few times. And once I get to the point that I don't feel like I have any negative habits that I want to leave behind, 
personally, I, I go straight to it. And part of the reason I would is because I can change the tempo. So even if I'm new at this, as long as I feel like I can play five measures, I can set the tempo at wherever I want. that phrase is hard to make in one breath at, at that yeah. tempo and then I can do chunk to chunk I can do the whole thing at that speed whatever I want and then I can speed it up as I'm ready to speed it up um, so I could take that same little phrase and then do it again at 69 and the reason I like doing it even when I'm not ready to play it fast the reason I like doing it, even when I'm still at a slow tempo, is because then I start hearing the accompaniment, how my part fits with it, what the ensemble, the togetherness of it is, as well as the harmony. So rather than focusing my eyes on a tuner to see if my intonation is decent, I can listen for how my, my pitch is in relationship to the music I'm playing, which is probably better for, for performance practice, right? I mean, we should use tuners. I'm, not, I'm pro tuner also. Um, but getting that ear trained by doing work with the accompaniment is useful also. So, yeah, whenever you're not worried about playing too many wrong notes. And even if you play wrong notes, my Pianist Pro can uh, will mark them like orange or blue if you played them wrong. And you can go back through and look at whatever notes you paid, played wrong too. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. And um, we did an interview with Yuho um, a couple weeks ago. And so if you scroll through the... Um, the uh, Soul of the Month page, you might find the link to the to the um, interview that we did with Yuho, and it talk, he talks a lot of the app in depth there. Um, if anybody has an extra hand who knows where that link is, I know there's a couple of people on here today who are um, in the Soul of the Month group. If any of you find that, can you just go ahead and copy it and type it into the chat like to, to everybody? Sure. Great. Thank you, Ruth. Nicely done. A round of applause from everybody here. Um, and let's see, I've got Sue with the look. Is Sue available? Ah, hi, Sue. Sorry, How are you doing today, Sue? Sue? I'm fine. Thank you. Great. Great. You're going to play some look? All right. Um, where do you want me to start? Or should as I much as you want. want. All right, I'll just start at the beginning. I'm going to skip the repeats for the sake of time.
Wow, oh, Sue. So <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, Beautiful. So, okay, so I had to start with my, start with my first question. question. What about what your about playing, playing today, today did you really, really enjoy? enjoy? Um, with this piece in particular, I really feel like I can be expressive. And so I really like that about it. Yeah, so, yeah, so rather, than rather than complimenting the piece, complimenting which, the we piece which we should, okay. I was very expressive I when I played I it. I was expressive when playing that piece. Yeah, yeah. it really was. It really what was. else did you like what about you, you, like about when, about you were playing? when you were playing? I didn't freak out. I Good. tend Good. to get so nervous that I start shaking. My vibrato becomes not a vibrato, but just like quivering. And that didn't happen, which was my goal for today. So rather than, so rather I, than didn't, I didn't, can you turn that into an, turn I that into an I did statement? statement? I stayed calm, relaxed, and focused on the music. You sure did. Sure wow. Did. wow. And that was and that gorgeous. Was gorgeous. Thank really you. gorgeous. Really gorgeous. I love I the spin of your vibrato. vibrato. I love I your love crescendos your and decrescendos, and, and, and it and really helps really shape the music. The music. Um, um, Normally, I'm Normally against I'm like any like much, much vibrato development. I'm not against it, but vibrato development used infrequently. But your measure your nine when you came on the scene and, and your vibrato grew, grew like, like it was so appropriate. appropriate. It was so, so beautiful. I loved it. You know, sometimes, sometimes especially young, young, like newer players, players when, when they start developing the vibrato, it sounds like the pop singer stuff. Yours, yours felt, so, felt natural so natural and expressive. And expressive. I, just I just applaud you. Applaud you. Thank you. We, we, now, second, now second thoughts. What are things that, you, are things would that like you would like to change or improve, change or, improve or grow or in grow or in feel in more, or confident, more with? confident with? Um, not so much with this piece, but I am, I get very intimidated when I see fast notes. And that's one of those things that I like, when Ruth played the um, Allegretto and I turned in my book to that page and I would have played that as da, 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 da. <laughs> just like a third of the tempo that she played. So um, not as much in this piece because it's, it's, it's a love song. And so, um, but I had to get over the 32nd notes to understand that they weren't intimidating and when i started they were very much yeah, yeah. So, so how did how you approach, did approach those, 30, those 30, seconds? 30 seconds i slowed them down i took them as just just ultra slow and just built myself up one at a time um and then i also take that whole section with the eighth note getting the beat which just then it's just like 16th notes which are not as scary could you, Could apply you apply your same practice, same methods, practice methods to the, the, the Goddard, Goddard and feel? Absolutely. Um, I sight read it this morning while we were waiting to go on. So it was, um, then when she started playing, I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, it can go quite fast. Reading, quite fast. Yeah, I was sight reading more of an Andante than a, an Allegretto. Well, it's good to sight read at a lower tempo. So really beautiful. So, really so beautiful. what are... So what are where are areas Where are in this that you would still, like, you would to still like to grow in these grow next, in these if you, next are if you are recording week, you know, week, what, you know what, what in this next what week do you hope to you still, hope do, with to still do with it? Um, I, I want to continue just trying to be very expressive. A couple of the places um, where it has the repeating notes, um, I want them to be separated so that the guy in the back of the hall is not hearing one note, but I thought as I played it today, maybe I was separating it too much. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, just a couple little things like that. And are you are you, are you thinking, thinking are you kind of in that kind measure, measure 39, 39 40, 40, 41, 40, 41 40, or, or yeah, uh, that, 49, that, 50, um, 40. I want those C's and then later when we do it on A's, I want the separation, but I don't know. Did you feel like it was too much separation? I know what you, know mean. What you mean. And it's tough. And it's we tough. do have we to plan have these to things, plan these things based, based on, on the environment, the environment in, which we're playing. in which we're playing. And it's acoustics and, it's acoustics and distance and, and, stuff, distance like and stuff like that. Ways to Ways feel to confident, feel that, confident you that you can make the adaptation, the adaptation that you need. That you need. 
would be to do kind of like a taper articulation where without stopping, this is my air stream. So without stopping the air, you can reduce the air and increase the air and just kind of, so kind of things like that. So let's think about that. We're going to slow it down. We'll do an A, it's a little easier. The air for now. Without stopping the air, let's add a tone. So the air is not stopping, it's just getting smaller and higher. Add the tongue add in, the at, the tongue in at the front of the loud. Yeah, add it yeah, in. Add it in. Okay. Ta, ta. Yeah. And similar to the discussion we had on double tonguing earlier, um, keeping the air continuing all the way to the point where the silence begins, which is here, not here, or anywhere else, I think is going to be what helps it have that kind of rock skipping on water type of lift rather than splash and splat, right? Uh, let's do the same thing on a B flat. And you heard my you second heard one was quite flat, quite flat because, because I compressed the air instead, instead of lifted, lifted the air. So, the air. so tom, tom. Tom. Yeah. yeah, and then the C. And then the oh. C. Oh. I just shrunk my chair, sorry. Chair, was it the same thing on the C? Same thing on the C? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes, sometimes we, do we do stop the, stop the air when we're tonguing, when something. We're tonguing something. But this is where you get to decide that's, that's part of the part forward of the movement forward of the sprays. The Maybe, then you, Maybe then you can reduce, reduce the, air, the air so it sounds, sounds almost, almost like silence, like or, silence lift, or lift, but not stop but not it. And that way you'll still feel the connection that you want. Let's try applying that. Ta ta. Without the airstream without actually the airstream stopping, stopping, it just lifts, it just lifts to be to real be small, real like a small, silk, like thread, silk thread, and then back, and then to, your back to your full tone. tone. Good. Good. How'd it feel? How'd it feel? I felt like I held it a little too long, but I got the the lift of the air. Thing. Okay, let's okay. try it again let's and see if, you can just, see if you can just see if it feels any more comfortable the second try. Second try. Good. I'm feeling Good. it. Start to feel a little bit more connected. More connected. You, are you are maybe changing, changing the, the rhythm, rhythm a little bit. A little bit. So, uh, what is it? Uh, what is five it? and a five six, a so one, three. Five and a six, a one, three. Sorry, I'm not a singer. Sorry, I'm, not a singer. I'm loving the lift. How does it feel? How does it feel? It feels good. Rhythmically, that's of, still a little bit like long. What I that, wanted this, that, it sounds more like what I was, I felt like not just cutting it off. Good. Let's try the exact let's same thing at uh, 48, 48 with the F, the F to A F ones. To A ones. Yeah, so yeah. if I have a phrase have in a mind, phrase mind a, phrase a phrase is a shape, is right? A shape, right? 
it's almost like geometry. A phrase like is a shape. Phrase is a shape. And I like and for I my like air for my to match the, match the shape of the phrase, of the phrase even if I'm putting if bits I'm of silence, silence in, there. in there. And one place, and where, one this, place where this, I think in this piece especially, is really apparent is that measure 43 also. Measure 43 when we arrive there. I oftentimes, and you didn't do it that like abrupt, but I oftentimes feel like all of a sudden we've lost the direction of phrase as we get there. So even in that, with an eighth note rest, I'm going to keep my air continuing. I'm just going to make it so small that hopefully there's no sound. We'll see what happens. And then I'm really out of breath by the time I get to that high D because I wasn't sneaking breaths in there. I could probably get away with sneaking breaths, but I like to just put that thought of it continuing through. Without worrying about whether you make the phrase or not, because we can add breaths in if you want. Try that same thought there where you're shrinking, minimizing the air to just the tiniest little silk thread, and then bringing the tone back on the notes. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. And you had plenty of air still, right? right? Yeah. All you right. know what I found right. though? I I pooed <laughs> those eighth notes instead of tonguing them. Yeah, I'm not I kind of did the close I, of my lips, which I as I was doing it, I was going, not the best technique. It depends it's on who you ask. I'm not anti-poo anti personally. personally. I am um, do whatever it do takes whatever to make the sound the way I want it to sound. Uh, if, I uh, if I have young students, students, yes, I'm like, yes, use, I'm your, like, tongue use your, because your tongue because we don't, because train, we them don't train, train them to use their tongue, they, they, use their tongue, they never do. But with like with students who are more mature than that, you can tell them like, make the sound you want to make. Who cares how you made the sound as long as it's healthy, right? As long as you're not feeling tension or pain or anything. like. I don't know. I it's know. hard to let go what our go sixth what grade sixth teacher, grade teacher told, us sometimes, told us sometimes, right? Because of course they because knew everything, course they knew and, they, everything. everything. And, they, and I'm sure they did. But it was where, you, was were where, where you were in that journey of your life at the time, time that they told you that. Told you so, so if you poo if you a little bit, but it sounds good, let yourself, you know, or figure out a tongue that can match it, and that can be just a whole other thing where you're working on that sound. But as far as the shape of the phrase, did it feel more like a musical line? Yes, I felt. I love the phrase. Good. Uh, and I'm going to have you play it again. And I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to see. I want, let's see, how, there's, still see how, there's still 10 other people 10 out there left. I want all 10, 10 people out there to breathe, to breathe in with Sue. Sue. We are going to we are going sing, sing and we're going to use our fingers with the direction of the air just so you can feel kind of like that illustration that I do with like the bike jumping on the phrase things. Have any of you seen that animation thing? Pretty cool. All right, so yeah, everyone's so muted. Everyone's we're going to sing along with Sue, along with Sue, and we're, and we're going to imagine that our that finger our is the shape, our hand is the shape of the phrase. phrase. All, right? all right, we're all doing all this doing together. together. So gorgeous. so gorgeous. I'm loving, I'm loving these, lines. these lines. Are you feeling, like, feel you're like you're able, able to, to say, what you, say what you want when you think of the think phrase, phrase shape that way? Shape that way? Yes. Definitely. Excellent. I love, I love that. I do feel I like, do you're, feel like you're beginning like also to also slow your, your tempo down, down compared, compared to where you started. Where you started. So Probably you might then like do this <laughs> in chunks with that tool, the metronome, just to see if you place it where you want it to be. Or with a accompaniment keeping you a little bit more forward driving, forward driving. Um, with, um, these, with types these types of pieces, of pieces where we want them to be, them to be passive, and passive and feeling, we want to make sure, that, make the sure that, the that the audience stays, stays enough, engaged enough engaged in what we're doing. What we're doing. So if so we if have we a slow tempo and slow down even more, even more, then they begin to, then sit, they back. Begin to sit back. And instead we want and them like, we want them like 
leaning forward with that like oh you know like listening like i want to hear more type of a thing um let's just do that one more time where you keep where you keep Keep the tempo, the tempo driving forward, forward as well, not pushing, not pushing forward, forward, but keep the tempo, keep the tempo and, and the phrase. Same place. Yes, yes, beautiful. beautiful. Okay. okay, so your so eighth note you said da di da. So then it's and one and three four five six one two three. So like your dotted half note G built a little bit longer than six eighth notes, at least in relationship to the six eighth notes that you presented in measure forty five, the F sharp E flat, right? Right. So, so maybe, maybe a metronome there will keep there you a little, little, little bit more honest, honest with not, not making that making too that thick, thick. Because, because the way that your, your dynamic, dynamic is increasing, increasing and your vibrato, and your vibrato is intensifying, leading to that G sharp, I think that you, I can, think just you can just not slow, not down, slow down there and then that G sharp will be an even more powerful arrival. So that's a tiny, tiny, tiny little nitpick because you are doing so much of this so fantastically. Are there any other things there that you want to talk about with this? I, didn't, I haven't done too much with you because you were already so well prepared. Thank you. But like, are there things that you'd like to talk about with this or another piece together? I'm good. Thank you. And bravo. Keep signing up for these because the more that you do, it's not actually changing your ability to play in front of other people. You are already able to do that fine. It's just reminding you reminding and giving you, you the, the opportunities to do it to where do then it, you're like oh yeah i don't oh, yeah, need to don't worry about that worry anymore about because, because, I've, because i have a successful, have a successful track record, record now so sign up for these all the time all the time i will thank you especially when we especially announce who the, next, announce person the is. next person is it won't always be me always be. <laughs> <laughs> all right so right. thank you so much bravo thank you very much all right and so i'm not in a rush if anybody else would still like to play this or something else, um, the Goddard, the Gluck, or something else, please let's go ahead and use the time. Or if there are any flute questions that you want to ask me or discuss as a group, you know, I do teach flute, but I'm not the only flute player in this group. We are all flute players and we learn with and from and for each other, right? So if there's any discussion that you would like to have or if anybody would like to play, let's go ahead and take advantage of the time if you would like. Sure. I am working on um, in the box sonatas, the number three in A major. And I'm at the Allegro, which, as I mentioned, I'm not an Allegro player. Um, but can I just, I mean, I'm just working it, but can I play a little bit and get some feedback? Uh, yeah. Uh, let, yeah. Me let me just get, get to, to the to sonata. The sonata. When I was in when grad, was in grad school, school, my, um, my um, teacher, made teacher made me memorize the first, the first 16, 16 measures, measures of every movement of every box sonata, and, 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 and he'd just be like, 1031, oh, movement two. two. And I'd be like, and I'd be like oh. but, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. but I can't do that anymore. <laughs> but I can't do that anymore. So, I, would, so. I would scream if that happened. I mean, just cry or something. I, I, did. I did. I did a lot. I did a lot. So is this so the solo sonata that you're working on? or? Yeah, it's the... Turn it around for a second so I can see the first measure. Thanks. All right, let's hear a bit.
Give me a little bit more. Give me a little bit more. Let's go ahead and pause there. All right, so you mentioned that the um, concern is getting it faster. Yes. Okay. And how do you approach playing faster now? I just learn it slow and gradually speed it up with the old trusty metronome one at a time and tick it up. And, and in trying that with this piece, what, what has worked and what hasn't worked with that attempt? It works. I haven't worked on it a lot of time yet. Um, it's faster than it was, trust me. Um, but it, it's just a slow, it seems like it's a very, very slow process for me. Sure. All right. All right. So, so in practicing in some, practice of technique, some of this technique, you might also, you might also see how much of it you can, much practice, much you can away practice away, from the, away music. from the music. So, uh, so uh, looking, uh, looking at the beginning, at the beginning we've, got we've got some scales, scales and thirds, thirds, some arpeggios, some arpeggios and stuff like that. Like that. Have, you Have you tried going, going through and seeing what, what technique do you need and then practicing, practicing that, technique? that technique? Explain. Well, well so, for, so for, example, for example, even though, even though uh, uh, does your, your version, version has three sharps three in the key signature? signature? Yes. Is that, am I on the right one? Yes. Uh, and uh, that, and second that second measure, though, is a G natural? natural. Is it just is it marked, marked as a G natural? G natural? No, mine's a G sharp. Can we start it again? Start it again. So I'm looking at a wrong key of this. Okay. Okay. Um, interesting. interesting. So, so the. the Scale and thirds scale right there. Right there. Is it start on an E? Yeah. E, G sharp, F sharp, A. So maybe practice your A major scale and your A major scale and thirds and your A major arpeggio away from the music as part of your warm up and work on getting those fast, fast, and faster. So that way, when you come to this, you know that you already have the technique. Master, master that you need, that you need for, the, for piece. the piece. Do you usually, you usually warm, up warm up that way, that way where before where you approach the piece, the piece you, you, you do you what, do you, what you need to do first? first? Yeah, I work on um, whatever the scale of the piece I'm working on. I do it like quarters, eighths, sixteenths, arpeggios, etc. Just awesome. awesome. Have you tried it with like a scale on thirds or something like this? I have not. Let's try the A major scale on thirds. We'll stick with just one octave for now. Let's do it. Swing slail. Keep your eighth note pulse about the same. So you're going to fill the duration of it with the long note and then rapid finger changes on the short notes. So that way you're still thinking slow, but you've got the fast finger muscle memory that you're learning. And the reverse, and short, the reverse long. short long. I'm losing myself. Uh, D piece, D F sharp. E G sharp. Yeah. So I like doing the diff alternate rhythms for that. So let's go ahead and jump to that second measure. And just do that one. So when you're playing this, do you find yourself 
struggling with certain places, places of giving it faster, faster or is it or just, just an just overall sweep, sweep of the whole thing? It's, it's overall and it's inconsistent. When I push the metronome up and I try to play, then I'll just like trip over a couple of notes and try to push through, go back to that spot later and go through it. But the next time I play it, it might not be that spot that I, you know, it's just, you know, like, let me just pick it up and who knows where the next, you know, trip, as I call it, will be. Good, good. Yeah, and yeah, I thought that sounded really fantastic. fantastic. Okay. So, so are you feeling, are you feeling the, the hands, hands resistant, resistant to speeding up, or are you feeling the brain, brain resistant, resistant to speeding up? It's it's fingers. I don't I don't you know my fingers are struggling to go quick. On easier On patterns, easy do you practice easy, easy, patterns easy patterns rapidly? Rapidly. Yes. 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 Um, excellent. Uh, excellent. So. so um, um, yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, I need I to hear you play this a little bit longer to to give you more feedback. Besides. Figuring out what the figuring technique out what is, technique practicing, is it away, practicing it away, and getting and that, more, getting rapid. that more rapid. So, how long, so have, you how long have you been playing this particular sonata? Um, just, just a few, couple weeks. Couple maybe weeks, three weeks. weeks. Well, maybe yeah. just needs a little, maybe bit, just more needs a little bit more living in, living it, too. in it too. Um, um, I don't, I don't feel like I have it under my fingers. Yeah, and yeah. and these and, boxings and these are, quite are quite tricky. So, try doing just a little bit longer of a. Of a, of a technique warm up, warm up specifically, for, specifically this, for this, getting those little, getting warm, those up little warm up patterns at the tempo, at the tempo where your goal where your performance goal pattern of this piece, piece would be. So my, I, I always tell my students if you can't play the scale, play the scale at, the at the tempo that the, that the piece is written, you're probably not you're probably gonna be able to play, play the piece at that tempo. Or if you can't play the arpeggio at the tempo, whatever it is, right? If whatever the technique is, if you, if the simplified version isn't getting to the speed that you want, then chances are the music won't either. So. So do a little bit of love on those technical, technical patterns, patterns, including the scale and thirds. thirds. To me, that's one of the trickier, that's trickier parts, parts of this and the arpeggios. Um, and, then and then just do just little, little chunks, chunks and speed it up. And, and I don't know, most, know, most important, most thing, important be thing, be patient with yourself because it sounds like you're doing all the right things. And I don't know, if I were there with you, I would just give you like a high five and be like, okay, it's not where you want it yet, but you're doing the work. So stay on the road. You're on a good path already. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Sorry to have more help you than Sue. And, and also, in case you uh, watch, watch the video, video back, back, there is a, a scowl, scowl I made during your performance that had nothing, nothing to do with you. you. I had my <laughs> phone on do not disturb, but somebody texted enough times that it bypassed the do not disturb. And so I was like scowling at the vibrating happening on my table in front of me. I thought you played delightfully. I felt so bad that I scowled. I was like, I have do not disturb on what is happening here. So. You are so fantastic. Thank you, Thank so you again much. for being delightful. being delightful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. May I ask a tonguing question? Sure. Is that Cynthia? Yes. Hi. hi. Um, I've been noticing that, and I would take out my flute to play, but my kids are still asleep. Um, uh, I've been noticing lately that I um, tense up in the throat when I'm about to articulate to the point where almost the air stream just freezes. Yeah. So, um, when you practice articulation, how do you practice specifically for the articulation then? Well, first I do some long tones to get the air moving. So, um, so I begin with that and I try to work into, uh, some tonguing after doing some octaves, just so that I can free the air and I'm only tonguing the first, the lower note of the octave to, and then when I come back down, I like to tongue four quarter notes. Mm -hmm. two 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 but then i feel like sometimes like i just like i am suspended in time and i am frozen and my ear won't move without waking your kids up with a flute could you air tongue a little bit for me just so i can just hear the sound of your air I haven't thought about practicing away from my flute, the tonguing, and maybe that helps. Yeah, so um, m many of us stop the air in places other than the tongue or the lips or the front of the mouth 
with the throat. That is something that we have to really consciously work on not doing. So if you just think that yawn, inhale, and then continuous air through the throat, it's a really hard thing to do, especially if we've developed tongue movement that involves closing the throat. A second thing though is body anatomy isn't universal. We all have different size and shape of tongue. And the tongue does connect pretty far down into the throat. So depending on the length of your tongue and the placement of your articulation, whether you're tonguing at the above your teeth, on your teeth, lower, wherever your tongue is touching, uh, have you tried to see if different tongue placements affects the amount that it tugs at the throat? I have not yet. Let me jot this down. Uh -huh. Okay. It did sound to me, though, that the tongue itself wasn't what was causing the throat to close because as you were setting yourself up, it seems like you were stopping yourself. So try, even if you have space, thinking the throat stays open and the air continuous. So before you do this, try this. Set your tongue in a place where the air can't go through. Put a little tiny bit, because we don't want too much pressure. We don't feel uncomfortable. Imagine that you're blowing just to build the tiniest amount of back pressure and open your throat. Is it hard to open your throat when you have that tiny bit of back pressure? Uh, yes. And then just pull your tongue back and air will come back out your mouth, right? So am I pulling back the tongue or dropping the tongue? Whatever movement feels most common for your body, depending on tongue placement. So I guess in my mind it's going back, but it's probably dropping down. So you're telling me to build resistance behind the tongue before I release it? No, what I'm trying to discover is if the throat can remain open when there is that back pressure. Oh. When you are, if you are, can blow from the gut, but stop the air with your tongue and keep the throat open. Uh, huh. Because <laughs> when you just demonstrated your, you were closing your throat, but I don't think it was your tongue that was closing the throat. Can you tongue a little faster? Yeah, and, and, and do this with me. I know the, like the visual symbolization is cheesy, but like if you inhale, and then the fingers, your air, okay? So let's do this together. Inhale, pull back, and let's just slur the first one. No tongue. Okay. Yeah, and I think you're tonguing, so go ahead and make sure you are, if you are at it. The visualization frees it up. And then the next thing, because if sometimes the fingers might make things tense, I do this a lot with my face just slightly off my lip plate. Oh, yeah. Or I can add the technique. Oh. We get a video of today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can come back to this. So maybe just listen for the sound of your air as you are focusing on the air being continuous and the tongue interrupting the air. That's probably yes. the number one, like hardest part of articulation for almost all of us, including myself, is stopping the air somewhere other than at the source or at the last part that our body can control. Because uh, we, we are so good at tightening our throat, you know, and this comes from like, that type of tension comes from, you know, being told not to talk when we want to or whatever, and we're like, oh, we catch ourselves in our throat, but it begins to feel that same way in our flute playing. So like kind of taking these like layers of ourselves away and just letting it be a column of air and knowing that that is how the sound is going to flow. Yes. Thank you. I mean, there's so much in what you just said in two minutes. Thank you. Yeah. And I, of course, would love to hear you more. So always ask questions and we will try to find answers for you and sign up for next month. I'm sure the next teacher will have some really interesting things to say about all of these things, which might be completely different than the way I talk about it. But I think that's part of the beauty of music is there's more right ways to do this than wrong, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks for your question, Cynthia. Thank All you. right, everybody, we're about out of time. Any other last minute questions? What's the um, pick for next month? What's the... For the solo of the month. For the main group, I think we're going to maybe do a poll, but the plan was from the um, planning crew 
We discussed doing actually all three movements of the Goddard Suite. Ooh. The Allegretto and the Idol are the two are two pieces that every flute player plays eventually in their life. Um, so working through those a month at a time. And then the waltz, the third movement, I have never played it. I've never heard anybody play it. It's like one of those things I didn't even realize the three pieces were meant to go together. So wow. um, we were waiting to make that announcement until we saw how much participation there was in the Goddard. Like if people were like, yeah, this is a good level of music for us, then we'd, just, we'd do all three movements. Um, and if nobody was participating, then we would be like, oh, maybe we should do something different, right? Um, so I think depending on how you all respond, next month will be the idol. And then I'm going to start practicing a little bit of the waltz now because it's a it's got some movement to it. If you play it fast, which it doesn't have to be done at that tempo. And yeah, Kate, much of this is too hard for much of us, but you know, five measures, 10 measures, there are a certain number of measures that maybe we can help you feel confident about. Um, I say all the time, none of us are getting paid to post here. So whether it is half tempo or half a movement or half a measure, we're all making the same amount of money. The only goal is for us to like challenge ourselves to learn a little bit more, to grow a little bit and do it together because, well, I don't know. Community is one thing that I hope that we can find again in this world uh, and realize that the flute community, we're spread out. We've got, I think, two countries represented in the Zoom today, um, but lots of states, maybe three countries. Um, is anybody Canada today? I know we had UK and US, but I didn't notice anybody from any of those anywhere else. Anyway, let's just do it together. One measure, half a movement, whatever it is, it's all, it's all okay. All righty. Before you go, um, you mentioned a, a file, um, some documents to refer to. Yeah, um, let's see. I'll I'll type it again. It's just the on the website www.practiceflute.com. Solos. I'm very slowly starting to. Oh, it should be solos. Sorry. Let me type that again. Slash solos. I think this page has. There's some solos have printable um, warm-up things. Some of the solos have videos that kind of go through step-by-step -step of practicing. But the one for today, it's for the God art, it's just that little um, like four-page yeah, PDF that it. goes through scale patterns and stuff like that. Just because like, and it looks intimidating because I did 16th notes. Sorry, I should have done eighth notes or something more appealing to the eye, less stressful to the eye. But my thought is, do all the hard stuff away from the music. So when you come to the music, it can just be enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and with the idol, hopefully I find the motivation to also make a little warm up for that. It is also relatively like based on scales and arpeggios and things that we commonly play. Um, and once we realize that those patterns are things that we've done before, then the music itself begins to look a lot less intimidating. Yes. Alrighty, everybody, you all rock. Thank you for being here. Um, if you get a chance to tell Flute Center for New York, thank you, please do. And we'll keep seeing your posts and I'll keep enjoying listening to you all play. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. Thanks, Happy everybody. Bye-bye.